welcome to another Kingdom War Room. I know we've been hearing from uh, a lot of the folks from the uh, Kingdom Intelligence Briefing wondering when we're going to get started with this again. And we're back. And we're excited. Uh, in fact, we're going to probably be doing several a month until trying to catch up with some things until we get to the end of the year. Now, in each of these podcasts, uh, we will conduct a Kingdom War Room discussion with key leaders in the body of Christ that will deal with strategic issues regarding end-time prophecy and the challenges that the remnant are facing worldwide. And for this, I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake. I'm with the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing, and I've written four books, and I'm going to do a shameless little plug here. The, the, my newest one came out is the Kingdom Priesthood. Uh, we also have my cohort in Kingdom Endeavors, uh, Dr. Mike Spaulding. He's the teaching pastor of Calvary Chapel. He has authored over a dozen books, and I want to give him a real quick plug because I think this one is more apropos with everything that's going on today. America is upside down, and it's not by accident, and the cure is the Church of the Living God. And uh, his website is www.drmikespaulding.com, and we're honored today to have a good friend of mine, Josh Peck, who is the host of the Multiverse. You see him a lot on Skywatch TV. He has authored eight books, and one of the ones that I think with that, he's, that he has co-written is the, com the Second Coming of the New Age. Guys, we need to, you guys need to have that in your armory. Uh, and know what's going on. But his latest one, he has went from author to creating documentaries. And uh, this new one is called Silent Cry, The Dark Side of Human Trafficking. And guys, we need to understand, and while most people are unaware of what's going on, guys, it's estimated that 1.2 million children worldwide are taking each year into human trafficking yet the church is unaware of this dark truth. All of society must become aware of the horrors inflicted on the most innocent. And guys, we need to work together to stop human trafficking. Josh, it's great to have you on the show with us today. Great to be here with you. Thank you so much for uh, having me on. It's an honor. And Brother Mike, it's great to have you. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but you know, we, we cast out a couple of devils out of some smartphones. We were all right this morning. <laughs> That's right. Hey, you wake up every day and it's a new spiritual battle, right? That's right. And to not believe that is to walk in foolishness in the days we live in. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, Josh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, the new video that you have done, this documentary, and, and really diving into something that is um, a subject, I think, that makes a lot of us uncomfortable. But the church itself, we are called to confront darkness. The Apostle Paul says we don't have fellowship with darkness. Rather, we are called and anointed by God to expose it. And that's exactly what you've done with this video. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, so for those who aren't familiar, uh, the title is uh, Silent Cry, The Darker Side of Trafficking. And that's not to say that there's a lighter side of trafficking, but it is to say that there's a side to this whole trafficking issue that isn't known, that isn't talked about. It's not in the mainstream. So it does deal with child sex trafficking, but it's not a typical trafficking documentary. Before making this film, I watched every child sex trafficking documentary I could find. Uh, independent ones, you know, ma major uh, big budget ones. And a lot of them kind of follow the same sort of theme. They rely heavily on uh, statistics, you know, logical, cold, hard facts, which is good. We need that. Uh, but what I what I kind of found lacking in a lot of them was some of the, the human connection. And definitely none of them uh, that I found dealt with the spiritual side of this whole thing, because we're engaged in a spiritual war. And that's this is just one manifestation of that. A lot of them just kind of stuck with the physical. Um, also, for some reason, many of them had uh, just a lot of guests. And it's good that there, there's that many people to talk about this issue, but you'd have, you know, in a lot of these, you'd have 20 or 30 people uh, talking about it. And to me, because this is a really, you know, emotional kind of thing, to me, it was hard to make any kind of connection with any of the authorities that were speaking in the film because there were so many of them. So in Silent Cry, I only have uh, seven. Originally, I had planned on 12, but due to COVID travel restrictions, five of them weren't 
able to make it, but we do have uh, interviews with them in the bonus features if people get the film at skywatchtvstore.com. And uh, I'll mention real quick, too, uh, before getting into the meat of the film, that if, if people get the film at skywatchtvstore.com or if they get it on Amazon, 100% of the profits go to Whispering Ponies Ranch, which is a place where children rescued from child sex trafficking uh, can learn to heal, you know, learn to live a normal life and can get past that all in the name of Christ. So trafficking absolutely is happening in America, and largely it's growing because it's been ignored. A lot of people in America don't want to admit that this kind of thing is happening. A lot of people will label it as all a conspiracy theory. Um, but it even goes deeper than that. There's a rampant occultism tied in with trafficking. Now, we admit in the film that the numbers of the, uh, uh, you know, the occultic cases, those are lower than just general trafficking. Um, but... Uh, it goes to show we try to be honest in this film and not sensationalistic. We we try to we try to not put anything in the film that we can't verify through eyewitness testimony or uh, through government documents or something. And when you know in the case that somebody is speculating, we we we're honest about that in the film. But at the same time, while we we aren't sensationalizing it, we're not sugarcoating it either. So I I don't hold back at all in this film. So it's not focused on unsubstantiated conspiracy theory and wild claims, but it does go where no other documentary has gone before in showing the truth of child sex trafficking from experts who have seen and experienced this firsthand. We even have some survivors uh, in the film. So, like I said, I was really selective on who I invited to be in the movie because I wanted uh, real experts actively working in the field who have a proven track record of doing this for years, who are actively working in it today, and not just somebody with an unqualified opinion, such as myself. Like, I would put myself in that category. I'm technically in the film, but I'm not speaking as an expert. I'm, I'm kind of just guiding the audience through the research. Uh, so I, I didn't want people, you know, like me, just, just giving an unqualified opinion. I wanted uh, real experts who, who have been fighting in this uh, for quite some time to ensure everything in the movie is accurate. Uh, so, again, I was really, really selective, and there's only seven, uh, seven guests. Um, and if you want, I can go through who's in the movie. Yeah, we, we can do that here in a minute. You know, one of the things sure. that, uh, that I ran across, this was back in the 90s when the occult was after my family. And we began digging deep and we had a lot of survivors, different things come out. Uh, just how many of them that we found that the, they call it the brotherhood, but it's the Luciferian brotherhood. Yes. Uh, their, their main way of producing off the books money is through sex trafficking of children and illicit drugs and just how protected those networks are and i think they have been they've been able to protect them number one using witchcraft which is something the church can really pray against and bind up and the second was our absolute ignorance of what was going on and that that's what i like about your film is it it it, it, it brings it to bear uh most of the ones in in, in the uh, in the film are all believers yeah and uh, why, don't you, why don't you go ahead and share the ones that are in it and, and some of their backgrounds. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, like you said, everybody in the movie, they're all believers. Um, first, uh, Yako Bullions, he's, he's probably the most... Uh, recognizable name in in this because he he goes he tours the country he he he's constantly doing interviews uh, some big audiences some small audiences he's willing to talk to anybody but he's been fighting this for for years um, he's been a previous guest on Skywatch TV he directed and produced the feature film Eight Days to raise awareness about the reality of sex trafficking in the United States he's also the founder of Share Together uh, which is a nonprofit organization fighting against the global crisis of sex trafficking and it's where we get some of our stats that we uh, do talk about in the movie. We also have his sister, Alanka Deaton. She's a survivor of child sex trafficking. She tells her whole story in the film, and today she also tours the country with Yako. Uh, and actually, he was one of the ones that helped rescue her from uh, sex trafficking when, when she was a child. So it's, a, it's an amazing story, and uh, we, we really feature the, the film around them. Um, David Hevener, he's a producer, actor, musician, filmmaker. Uh, he's kind of like our Hollywood insider. He speaks openly about the uh, about sex trafficking that that he he's seen glimpses of, hints of firsthand in association with Hollywood. Uh, he works with victims of trafficking and satanic ritual abuse today. Uh, he even had a family member of his, a cousin. 
who was just br- brutally raped and and killed. Some some might actually recognize the name Shonda Shear, and uh, that's David Heavener's cousin, and he tells the story in the movie. Uh, Stephen Bancars, he's a previous guest on Skywatch TV for uh, Second Coming of the New Age, a book that he and I wrote together about how New Age theology is creeping into the church, because he and I both have come out of New Age years and years ago. He's an investigative research into uh, uh, sex trafficking and Satanism. So before becoming a Christian, he was one of the most well-known voices in the New Age movement. So he, he a lot of his research has uh, dovetailed with this as well. Uh, Thomas Dunn, filmmaker and director of a movie called Detestable. Uh, he's an advocate for victims of satanic ritual abuse, and he works with other experts to assist people coming out of SRA, uh, helping them to adjust to normal life. We also have uh, Joe Horn and Tom Horn. They're the producers of the film. Um, they they're you know with Skywatch TV, but they also uh, together with uh, Nita Horn run Whispering Ponies Ranch, which I mentioned a moment ago, uh, helps victims of child sex trafficking uh, heal in the name of Jesus. So, and once again, all the profits of the movie go to Whispering Ponies Ranch. Um, and then uh, we, it's also narrated by John B. Wells. He has one of the most recognizable voices in America. He hosts Caravan to Midnight. And then Derek Gilbert, host of Skywatch TV, um, narrates part one of the movie, which is about the Finders cult, uh, which, which shows how we can't trust the government to solve this problem for us. That was the first thing I really wanted to hit in the movie. So that's that's a basic rundown of everybody who's in the film. They're all believers, but at the same time, uh, when people get this movie, they're not going to get a super preachy film. I, I, I tried to make it in a way, not to suppress Jesus or anything, but I tried to make it in a way that uh, non-believers can watch this and benefit from it too and not feel like they're, they're being preached at, although there is a very strong Christian message in it. So uh, we... I, I, I deal with that in the movie as well. Uh, Dr. Mike, is there some things you want to, questions you want to ask and things you want to share on this? Yeah, well, I, thank you, Mike, and thank you, Josh. So the importance, folks, of, of this documentary, Silent Cry, uh, can be seen when we, when we look at the, I call it the media blackout. They don't want to touch this subject, and, and the reason they don't want to touch the subject, in my opinion, is because many of those that they support and they advocate for, whether they're politicians or celebrities, are involved in it. And to to speak of it then would bring, uh, shine the light on those folks, and they just don't want that to happen. Josh, you mentioned that this isn't a conspiracy. That that's the first thing that those who try to shut people up mention, isn't it? Well, this that's just conspiracy. That's just unfounded. And I remind people again, Conspiracy is nothing more than plans made in secret. That's, That's right. That's all it is. Plans made in secret. And and the media is definitely uh, in collusion. And when I talk media, I'm talking the corporate owned media, of course. They're in collusion against documentaries, against information like this. So I applaud you, Josh, those that participate in it, Skywatch, uh, Tom and Joe, everyone involved in this to, to speak out. And, and you mentioned something, and then I'm going to toss it back to you, Dr. Mike. You mentioned something, Josh, uh, that, that piqued me immediately, and, and that is that we can't trust the government to solve this. And the reason for that is the government's involved in it. Many right. of the state child protective service agencies are known for child sex trafficking, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And we deal with that in the film. Um, these traffickers and, and, and pimps and groomers, they, they will actually send kids into foster care. They want kids in foster care because they, they will, they'll train children to groom other children, to, to bring in other children. So the, 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 these abusers have learned to use these government systems that are, you know, we're, we're, we're all told are supposed to help people and clearly they don't. Uh, but traffickers have learned to utilize these government programs for their own benefit in grooming and training children. So we see that a lot in uh, foster care, in, in uh, CPS, you know, ch- child protective services. We see it a lot there. But even outside of that, even outside of the government, we see it in a lot of things that are supposed to be just wholesome uh, family groups like Boys and Girls Clubs of America, even even in like youth groups and churches. One of the problems with this is a lot of people have um, this, this propensity to want to point at a certain group and say, see, it's them. You know, the, the, the Catholic 
Catholics have a problem with pedophilia. See, it's them. They're the problem. Or like the Muslims, they, they do like underage marriage stuff. So it's them bringing it. It's not any one group. It's a human problem. It's a human heart. You're going to find it in every group. You're going to find it in every group except for actual born again, you know, believing Christians that uh, have, have given their lives to Christ. You're, you know, if somebody has truly given their lives to Christ and they're not living in the flesh, then you're not going to see it uh, in that in that remnant, uh, which, you know, I, I would, you know, obviously include you guys, you guys, your, your audience, hopefully my audience and the people that we talk to. Uh, but we still have issues um, of the human heart that that need to be dealt with and need to be taken care of. So in the film, um, we I, I, I lay out well, the experts really lay out how we can't trust the government to solve this problem. It's not a matter of just voting the right person in, though we do need to do that as well. You know, we have uh, a president right now who is actively fighting against child sex trafficking. Uh, but we have to remember, he's one guy. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of loyalists behind him. He's got a few, but not a lot. And he's not going to be president forever. So we can't trust the government to solve this for us because so many of the establishment uh, the, the people who really are in government forever, who don't have term limits, they're involved in this. And we show cases of that uh, in the film. So what it amounts to is that the responsibility is on us in our own individual lives. So there's there's no such thing as a top-down solution to this. It's a bottom-up. It's it's every individual uh, making changes in their own lives, you know, abstaining from pornography, 68% of Christian men. And th this is just the ones that admit it. So the percentage is probably a lot higher, but 60% of Christian men are addicted to pornography. And the number for women is around the same, if not a little higher, surprisingly. So abstaining from pornography and, and sexually explicit material, even, even, if it's, even if it's a case of it's just a movie, but the movie is using sex to sell, like a lot of the teen comedy sort of movies, they'll use s sexual humor to sell that movie. We need to abstain from that as well because it's creating this, this over-sexualized culture that we're living in right now. So anything we do to contribute to that, just, just uh, there's a one-to-one -one connection here, will directly uh, contribute to the child sex trade, which is is just horrific. So I think once individuals realize that connection, which we, we try to show in the film, once they realize that, they'll they'll see okay, the solution is for individuals deciding, you know, uh, on our on our own that we're not going to live for the flesh anymore. We're not going to live for entertainment and certainly not for, uh, you know, uh, perversions and things like that. But ev even even what would be considered, quote unquote, innocent entertainment in our day, like just, you know, rated PG-13 or rated R movies, uh, anything that, that is sexually uh, explicit or sexually suggestive, we need to decide that we're going to turn away from that and vote with our dollar. If we're going to rent a movie, if we're going to buy a movie, get something wholesome and try to, you know, do that in your individual life. If enough people do that, that can spread across families, across communities, across states, across the country, and across the world. And these companies, because all they care about mainly is money, they care about other things too, but mainly they're really focused on going in the direction of where's the money, where's the power. Well, there's more of us than there are of them. So if we just start voting with our dollar, a lot of these companies are spineless. They, they will go where the, the money is. If there's a big enough demand for uh, wholesome entertainment, they'll start producing it more. And so that's how we can kind of shift this culture back, but it's going to take each and every one of us individually deciding, today is the day I'm not going to sit on the fence, which is actually being a part of the problem. Today's the day I'm going to make active steps to be a part of the solution. You know, one of the things that's amazed me is how that they will sneak these things in the movies and they don't add anything to the plot line it actually takes away from. And yeah. they'll sneak it in PG-13. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's really crazy. I've got, I've got a book in my library about when the movie industry first started. So we're talking old black and white, barely talking movies. And they were trying to insert things back then that was uh, so risque that, uh, they had to have something called Hollywood censors. Originally it wasn't censored. It was back then. The agenda was to bring that in. Yep. Cause I think there's, there's a, there's a certain amount of social engineering uh, that they have been doing through movies and through TV and everything else. And so uh, there, there's part of this has been prescribed and that we, we need to quit taking their pills. We, yes. need, we need to quit taking their junk and, and to serve thing on. And, you know, I like a good action movie, you know, every once in a while, you know, you have to watch something blow up. Sure. But there, 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 
why why sexualize that? Why why put some of the junk in there? And there's just a lot of my, I won't watch. Uh, Mary and I have decided, well, if it, if it comes on TV and it's on where we know that they're going to edit it, you know, we'll, we'll watch it, but otherwise, no, we're, we're not going to do it. I don't care how good the movie is. I don't care how super powered the guy is. The storyline or that moments of entertainment are not worth the junk they're trying to put in my mind because this stuff is addictive. Uh, pornography is as addictive to the brain as crack cocaine. Yes. Yeah. And guys, we, we need to stay away from it. We need, we need to, uh, to, to teach our people, you know, keep, keep your minds clean, keep this stuff out of, out of your, out of your marriage, keep this stuff out of your relationships. Um, and I, I think we need also need to be watchful for what's going on there. I mean, there, there there's some things you deal with in the movie that, that, uh, believers can do, uh, you know, with how many, how many of these rings have been stopped because somebody saw something and it wasn't right. And you had a mama hen calling the police saying, boy, there ain't something right here. And we, we need to stop this. Uh, guys, we, we can make a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can. absolutely. Yeah, we can. And, 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 and let me just pick up on that, Mike, uh, something that Josh said, this, this is the, this is a call to the church today. Yes. This is a call to mission. This is a call to gospel proclamation. Sometimes people get this weird notion that, you can only preach the gospel in the church and, and you're in the building in the meeting. And, and I'm of the opinion, listen, those folks that have been born again and walking with the Lord for 35 years, they don't need to hear the gospel again. The gospel needs to be preached out on the street to right. those that are lost. And Josh, you said something. I said, boy, that is spot on. It's a matter of the human heart. It's a, yes. ma it's a condition of the heart. And because it is a condition of the heart, church, that is your invitation to get involved and address this thing in the most forceful manner possible. It's a, it's a matter of the heart, and so that calls the church, but it also calls us to vote. So let me tie those two things together. Every election cycle, at least statistics tell us, uh, Neil Mammon is, is, is right at the top of people that I pay attention to. He does the research on this. Every election cycle, there are nearly 30 million professing evangelical Christians that do not vote. Mm -hmm. What would happen, gentlemen, if 30,000, I'm sorry, did I say 30,000? I meant 30 million. What would happen if 30 million additional professing, Bible-believing, Christ-loving Christians actually, we'd win every election, wouldn't we? Yeah. And we absolutely we, would. Well, our we faith, do that, don't we? <laughs> you know, uh, how many, one of the things I got pinged on uh, just recently on one of our podcasts is they kept on saying, you know, uh, you're always talking, mentioning the Republicans, but you know, there are, there are millions of Christian Democrats. And before I could even respond, somebody posted right on top of that. No, there's not. <laughs> Yeah, because it's really a matter of are you living for the flesh or are you living for Jesus, and and what is going to fall mo more in line with those with those values? Because when you're living for Jesus, you realize that yes, it's true, our kingdom is not this world. You know, we're we're our kingdom is heaven, our kingdom is with God, but we're also put here for a reason, and we're we're supposed to uh, you know take care of the earth while we're here. Well, we're also put in this country for a reason. We're supposed to take care of the country to to the best of our ability, and the system that's in place is the one that's in place. There's not a whole lot we can do about that. So every four years, we're given a choice. And neither of those choices are going to be perfect, you know, but there's going to be a clear, a, a clear, obvious choice that's going to fall more in line with what's going to be uh, better for uh, Americans or more in line with what, what Jesus would want or, or more in line with how God would like things. I am admittedly a one-issue voter. I, I only vote on one issue. And that's, are they pro-life or are they pro-choice? Are they pro-abortion? I don't even like the term pro-choice. Uh, you know, are they pro, do they, do they want to keep babies in the womb alive or not? You know, are they protecting the most innocent among us or not? I don't care if somebody raises my taxes. If they're, if they're pro-life, 
and they're actually protecting that child, then I'm going to vote for that person. I don't care if they have an R or a D in front of their name. That The, the other stuff doesn't really matter as much to me uh, because I think that that's the most destructive thing outside of child sex trafficking, but really the two go hand in hand, which, which that's another thing that's strange too. I almost added a section in the movie about abortion, but I realized, you know, this would be a movie all its own if I, if I really dig into this, uh, because these two issues, they're both against the most innocent among us, you know, the most, the most pure, the, mo the most holy, you know, if we could use a word like that. I mean, they're before the age of accountability, before they know the difference between right and wrong, you know, before, before sin has really, I mean, I know we all have a sin nature, but before sin has really touched them in a way that they're manifesting it into the world, they're the most innocent among us. Of course, that's going to be a target for Satan, but you, you see it as a target both in the child sex trade and in the pro-choice movement, and they go hand in hand. And that's why they attra these two things attract Satanists. You have the Satanic Temple and Satanists all around the country celebrating openly, pridefully celebrating uh, the the pro-abortion stuff. And, and then, but you also have, and it's more underground, but you have Satanists and occultists uh, engaging in the child sex trade because, hey, if they're looking for a child for their sacrifice, for their demonic sacrifice, are they going to risk? kidnapping a child, sometimes they do that, or if they have the ability, are they just going to get a child through a trafficker? And a lot of times, what we found in, in our research for this film, a lot of times nowadays, because we have the internet and the means are are available more now than they were before, nowadays, uh, these, these occultic circles can go through a trafficker, because the trafficker doesn't care what they use the child for. To, to obtain children for, for sacrifice and other rituals. So it's really interesting that these two issues, child sex trafficking and abortion, attract the same type of evil people. And it's really because these two go hand in hand. So yeah, when I when I vote, it, for me, it's it's who's protecting the children and then the rest of it, to me personally, the rest of it's secondary. So that's why, and I agree with you, I don't see how we can have uh, Christian Democrats, how, how a true Christian who's not living for the flesh, who's, who's living in the spirit, who's walking their lives with Jesus, following Jesus, I don't see how they could support uh, things on the Democratic platform, such as the, the pro-choice argument. And I've argued with people, not, you know, I, I should say debated. I've debated people online uh, who hold the position that they're a Christian Democrat, they're a Christian pro-choice, and I, I, I tell them, I, I just, I don't see how you can be living in the spirit. I'm not perfect, but I don't see how you can be living in the spirit and come to that conclusion, because that's a fleshly conclusion. I, I, I don't see it. You know, one of the things, and I document this in my in the Kingdom Priesthood, and it was dealing with abortion, that here in, you know, Missouri, they've really tried to put the kibosh on abortion as much as possible. Yeah. And they were sued by the satanic church who claimed that abortion was a part of their religious practice. Yeah. And we, we need to understand that human trafficking uh, and abortion are all a part of the ancient mystery religions that are still a part of the society today. And I, I think they're in my, my personal view is that a lot of the higher echelons, the ones really making the money on, on, on sex trafficking are the Luciferian elite. It's, it's not just so that, you know, so that a satanic group can uh, find a child to use for a ritual. They're the, they're the, they're the, they're the high up on the food chain to where they're making the money and they're building the networks and they're enforcing uh, their protection. Yes, and as, long as, and as long as the body of Christ is not praying and we're not speaking out, that protection will remain part of its spiritual and part of its political power. But when the people begin crying out and we begin praying against these things, as well as their ability to cover these activities, then our law enforcement can really do what they have wanted to do all along. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right, and uh, and you're right about that too. The the elite, because you know when I'm when I'm talking about these satanic circles, I'm talking about you know these little wannabe groups that you can find in small towns. They'll still sacrifice children and hurt children, but there is an overarching um, Luciferian elite with all this, and we actually saw an example with Jeffrey Epstein. Now, you know, I believe that he was kind of the their their sacrificial lamb to get the spotlight off of them. You know, hey, everybody, pay attention to Epstein, as if he's the only one. Um, there, there's a lot of 
of these guys. We we even have direct evidence, though, that Epstein was directly tied in with the occult. There were several things found on uh, Epstein's island showing that he most likely had direct ties to the occult, which probably played a part in the rape and, and possible sacrifice of children. There was, uh, you know, the most obvious example is the temple that everybody's seen. But there was other things, too. We include in the film drone footage that shows a giant uh, sundial with 13 chairs pointing to uh, these rune stones. There's gods and goddesses all over the island. There's a giant green man from antiquity. There's labyrinths, which have uh, direct connections to child sacrifice, according to ancient mythology. And then we see certain symbols repeated at Epstein Zorro Ranch in New Mexico. There's a giant rectangle berm area on Epstein Island that had these same symbols as his Zorro Ranch. It's four paths leading to a circle with a square in the middle of it. And what that is, ancient occult sites discovered around the world have been you have been uh, discovered to have used the same pattern, such as the Egyptians, uh, the human sacrificing Mayans, four paths leading to a circle encompassing a, a square. You can see that in the, the Mayans temples and things like that. What's really strange is this was the one area that, that there was a real effort to cover up. So we show this in the film. Images on the island were captured in 2013 of that berm area with those symbols, uh, showing, showing the symbols clearly. But then in 2017, and this was around the time that investigators were closing in on Epstein, there was a really sloppy effort made to cover it up by building a so-called tennis court uh, over this berm area, which you, you you see the pictures in the in the movie, and it's silly. I mean, the, these this tennis court, you would shatter your ankles if you tried to play a game on it. There's peaks and valleys all over the place. It was a real sloppy job. But then in 2019, um, the whole area was bulldozed out, and all of the symbols were removed. So why is that? That was the one thing that they were really focused on hiding. So, and I think it's because, you know, quite literally, whether someone wants to say it was just decorative or not, I don't think it was just decoration, but quite literally you have Jeffrey Epstein and he had at least two occult areas dedicated to human sacrifice, one on his island and one on his ranch where he and his high-powered friends are known to have gathered. So absolutely, there is a Luciferian elite that's involved in this stuff and perpetrating it. And when... Epstein, you know, got caught. He was used as as like a scapegoat. So the whole country pays attention to Epstein and they don't pay attention to this larger issue. I believe personally we're going to see the same thing with Ghislaine Maxwell. She might give up a couple of names, but I don't think she's going to give up all the names of the, this Luciferian elite. And then the elite will use those couple names she gives up to take to take attention off of them because that's exactly what we saw in the Epstein case. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the, uh, just recently I saw where the DOJ had uh, put a suspe uh, subpoena out for the pilot's logs, the big logs that has thousands and thousands and thousands of names, which is their nightmare. Uh, I also remember back when the, the, the investigations first came that they began bringing in cement truck after cement truck after cement truck, and it wasn't redoing that berm, there was something else. I just wonder what they were encasing in concrete to make it very, very difficult for the investigators to find. Oh yeah, you're right. It, well, it definitely that the concrete was not for the berm area because you can go on uh, Google Maps now um, and you can see that berm area and it's all dirt. Like there's no concrete on it. So that concrete was used for something else. And yeah, what what that might be. And, and see this this pattern will keep repeating. You know, they, they will keep finding scapegoats as long as we as Christians are not calling out to God and are not standing up um, uh, for the truth because they're getting away with this because there isn't a large outcry in America. They're allowed to get away with it. They're going to get away with whatever they're allowed to get away with. So as long as we Christians aren't praying for one, but also aren't standing against this uh, and, and having some kind of public outcry against it, it's going to keep happening. It, it could still happen even with the public outcry, but at least then when we stand before God as individuals, at least then we can tell God, uh, when, when he asks, you know, what did you do for my little ones? We'll be able to tell him that we at least tried to stand up for the truth, even even when it was difficult, especially when it was difficult. I mean, that that's one thing that motivates me, something that Tom Horn said uh, near the end of the film about ways that, you know, ways that people are judged, you know, believers and non-believers, but way, ways that we're, we're, we're all judged as human beings. And one of the things that God's really uh, uh, interested in is how we treat the most innocent among us, how how we treat our children and, and even our widows and things like that. Because he says, what you do unto them, you do unto me. So if we ignore this, if we ignore these issues, I mean, 
it, it sounds like to me it's it would be the same as ignoring Jesus. And so when I stand, I know for me when I stand before God, I'm certainly not perfect, and I'm going to have a lot of those works that are going to be burnt up as as hay and and stubble and wood. Uh, but when I stand before God, I want to be able to I want to be able to say when when it really came down to it, even when it was difficult, I I did what I I did what I could to stand up for these children and for you, Lord. And I, I, w- I want to be able to tell them that uh, as fully and honestly and truthfully as possible. And we only get one shot at this. We get one life, so we have to make it count. I think all of us, if, if we stand up as individuals and really take this seriously, we can turn this country around. God will work through us, and it can happen. But as long as we're silent, it, it, it's going to continue as it always has since the dawn of man. I've got one thing I want to share, and I want to give it over to Dr. Mike. Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm very vet sensitive, uh, being a veteran myself, Yes, there have, there has been a movement of tier one and tier two operators that have retired across many nations. Now, one of the things that Trump did is he gave them the go ahead, go get these guys. Mm -hmm. And he really took the cuffs off the police, but the raising of, of special forces and higher retired vets have kind of did have kind of built a coalition. And they're going around the world wherever they can and trying to free up these kids. Yes. Uh, which which I take my hat off to. Uh, but it, it's showing how prevalent this is around the world. This is not just an American uh, problem. This is a worldwide problem. And uh, it can, and I mean, some of these tentacles can go into the highest levels of politics, highest levels of the corporate world, the banking world. And, and we, we need to be aware of this uh, so that we can pray properly. This is not a small problem. It is an absolutely humongous problem worldwide. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. And, and I'll just uh, provide an example. Um, I have a brother uh, that I know from a, a Calvary Chapel about an hour from here. He and his wife uh, began a ministry several years ago, and now they are fully devoted to it. And that is going to, uh, well, he's currently en route. Well, I don't know how much I should divulge here, but he's been to the Philippines. He's been to Thailand. He's currently going back to Southeast Asia. I'll leave it at that to do exactly what you're talking about, Mike, going in and rescuing children that are being subjected to sex trafficking. One of the things that I wanted to point out, Josh, and hear your comments on is, uh, some folks think, well, what can I do? This problem is so big, it's a, it's a mountain that, that I, what am I supposed to do here in, in little Podunk County, Ohio? What can I possibly do? Well, he, here's my suggestion. This is being normalized. Pedophilia is being normalized right in front of our eyes. Uh, things like cuties, things like drag queen story hour, these things are being pushed and pushed and pushed so what you can do in the community in which you live, if you see anything that is raised up, that is trying to normalize or, or make this out to be something that's just natural, because that's the strategy, it seems right now, we're going to normalize this so that, so that people will accept it. You can become involved in speaking out against that. You can rally your neighbors, your, your church, get your pastor involved. And speak publicly. Don't not not. I'm just not. I'm not talking just social media. I'm talking about going to your city council, going to your school board, telling them you're going to oppose this, stand against these things, take a stand. Because Josh, to your point, the father will ask, "What did you do to protect the little ones?" And you don't want to stand there embarrassed that you did nothing. So mm-hmm. rise up, church. This could be our greatest hour right now. Absolutely, and it's needed. And everybody can do something. I mean, everybody can do something. God has equipped you with something. Even even if you're, you know, an elderly person, bedridden, you can close your eyes and pray. Uh, I mean, even prayer. Prayer is one of the most powerful things that we really need because not enough people are praying, and that that's that's the most obvious thing that people can do. Um, 
there's other things if you're if you're able you can financially support ministries that are already fighting on the front lines in this fight because they do need funding so places like whispering ponies ranch places uh you know pe- people like yako bullions and alaka deaton and that that will help them tour the country and talk about this uh so th- those are some obvious things as well um but if you can't support financially you know like i said praying and fasting if you're physically able to fast because that, that's something that we we typically a lot of times don't talk about anymore the the importance of fasting and, and how powerful that can be. Uh, but prayer is incredibly important. Uh, beyond that, there are several um, things that, that we can all do, creative things that, that God can use your talents for this uh, or can use the means that you may have. I, I actually had a woman donate a, a, she runs a billboard company, AZ Billboard. She actually donated a billboard for this movie uh, to, to get it out there. And it, it's, uh, like I said before, it's not uh, for my fame or my fortune, all the profits go to Whispering Pony's Ranch, but it's to get the word out about this problem of child sex trafficking and showing that it is a spiritual issue. So, um, you know, God, God might provide you with something like that. Uh, but even even if not, even if you're not well off and you don't think you have anything to contribute, you have your, your life with Jesus to contribute. Like we said, that pornography is the largest contributor to a culture that allows child sex trafficking. There's a direct one-to-one relationship between pornography and child sex trafficking. I've had people ask me in private because they've heard my interviews, and they'll ask me in private, you know how how do I how do I stop? I want to stop. I, I I hate that I have this addiction, but every time I try to stop, I end up going back to it. So how what do I do? And the answer that I give, the thing that that I I think is is most effective. And I I should say too that we also have in the bonus features we have an interview with a woman named Bree Marie Atkins. Uh, she came out of a, a porn addiction, and she talks about it. She's a Christian now, and she she's given her life. She's she's she has control over this, and she now counsels people out of. Uh, addiction to pornography, and I have an interview with her in the bonus features available at skywatchtvstore.com if they get the movie there. But I tell people the main thing is to look at this in the light of truth for what it is, because most people who are addicted to pornography, they they have convinced themselves, or the enemy has convinced them that it's just their own secret thing, you know, they're only really affecting themselves, Um, it's not really affecting their wife or their kids or their community because, you know, it's something they do in private, it's not affecting anyone else. That is a lie from the enemy. If you just, all you got to do is look at it in the light of truth. So look up on Google. Um, you can look up the connection between child sex trafficking and pornography, or the, or or the 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 connection between pornography and child pornography. You know, Google something like that and look at all of the articles. There are dozens of of really well established articles showing this direct one to one link. Uh, it's not even contested. It's just an obvious fact that if you view pornography even one time, you are supporting child sex trafficking. So once you start seeing it in the light of truth for what it is, you'll begin hating it. So what I advise people to do is research it, look into this connection and read everything you can find about it. You will begin to hate hate pornography. You'll begin to hate that addiction in you. You won't, you won't, over time, you're not going to feel as, as uh, compelled to engage in it. And you'll even start hating that part of yourself uh, and that's okay, you know, the, the old man needs to die, so the little bit of the old man that might still be alive, even if you've given yourself to Christ, you, you'll you'll start to hate that old man, and you'll be able to crucify him along with the rest, and truly live a life for Christ. Because if you're living for the Spirit, if you're walking in the Spirit... Uh, you're not walking in the flesh, meaning you're not gonna you're not gonna uh, be engaging in these these acts. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna be tempted. Everybody gets tempted, but when you are tempted, Jesus is gonna give you the strength to overcome it. But you have to be willing to do it. That comes through the light of truth. So that's one thing people can do. But I would even take that a step farther, as I said before, because some people might be watching and saying, okay, but I don't have a porn addiction, so what can I do? Uh, and it, it's what we talked about before: monitoring your entertainment, deciding that children. Uh, uh, their lives, their safety are more important than your entertainment. So look at what you're you're watching. Is there anything sexually explicit? You know, it might not even be TV. Maybe it's magazines or, uh, you know, there, it, it comes in all forms. We're in a very sexually driven uh, culture, unfortunately. So I, I promise you, if you look hard enough in your life, there's going to be f- something that you can find to to root out. And then outside of that, 
Talk to your community. Talk to your family. Be a strong uh, representative of Christ in your family. And I'm specifically talking to fathers here. You have no idea how important uh, you representing Christ in your family. You have no no idea how important that is not only for your family but for your community. Because if your daughter, your son or daughter, let's just say daughter because most of trafficking victims are, are girls, although boys are, are steadily on the rise. But let's say if your daughter doesn't have a strong relationship with you uh, or can't trust you because maybe you've been dishonest about some of your own shortcomings, which we as parents, we always feel compelled to do that. You know, we want to convince our kids that like we have no fault. Uh, but if, if you've done that and your daughter doesn't trust you, it's going to be that much easier for a groomer, for a trafficker to come along and play the hero and, and gain the trust of your daughter. So have humility, have humbleness, uh, be be honest about your own shortcomings with your kids because they're going to know them anyway. It will go a long way uh, with, with trust, building trust, if you're honest about it. But it will also show your daughter, okay, a real man is honest about their shortcomings. A trafficker is never going to be honest about his shortcomings. You know, an abusive person, an abuser, uh, they're never going to be honest about their shortcomings. So if you can teach your kids and your sons, this is what a real man looks like. Your sons will emulate that. Your daughters will look for that when they grow older and, and, and start getting interested in boys. They'll start looking for those traits. So you have no idea how important your relationship as fathers and mothers too, but I'm a father myself, so I connect more with fathers. You have no idea how important your personal relationship with Christ is to your family and your community. It's not all about you. It's all about Christ. So I think if we get that mindset in us, uh, we can go a long way in turning this country around, turning the world around, really. You know, one thing I can add to this, of course, I've, I've had to study the mystery religions for all the research that I've done. Yeah. Pornography has it has origin around the pagan altars, the altar of Ashtaroth, the, the, the altar of Molech, that you would have participants and you would have watchers, okay? And what we need to realize, that is its origin. So when you watch it on your computer, on your phone, or on your TV, in those moments, your TV, your phone, and your, or your computer has become a pagan altar. Absolutely. Good point, Mike. And, and uh, man, if you, so you're, you're, you're creating that access point, that pagan altar uh, in your life and in your home or where, wherever. So this is not a private thing. Uh, it, it is a calling card to the spirit realm that, that you are participating in pagan activities. And uh, it needs to be broken. Uh, guys, if, if you've ever been involved in it, you need to repent of it in the name of Jesus. You need to command any spirits that have come into your life because of it. You need to command them to leave in Jesus' name. Make sure everything's under the blood. Uh, pray over the equipment that you used. Spiritually sterilize it because there is a spiritual infection that comes with it. And, uh, you know, so many, especially young men, get involved with it because of curiosity and everything else. And guys, all of us, we, we need to stand up and say, listen, this is enough. I'm breaking it in the name of Jesus. It's no longer going to be a part of my life. And Father, in the name of Jesus, any, any neural pathways that have this junk in there with any spirits that are attached to them, cleanse it by the blood of Jesus. Erase the hard drive in Amen. Jesus' name. And uh, if, if we'll hit the spiritual side of it, too, I think it will make a great impact. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, something else that people can do as well. I, I've been telling people use the hashtag silent cry when they post on social media. Uh, but in, in addition with that, we, we need to get used to rejecting the sensationalism. You know, we, we need to all become respectable investigators. And that doesn't mean that we can't talk about extreme things. There are, there are extreme things that are true. They're not sensational. They're true. Um, but the, the sensationalism uh, around this issue is what uh, people in the country and in the world, but what what people will use as an excuse to uh, call the whole thing a conspiracy theory. So we, we, we need to be, we need to create for ourselves a reputable, reputable, a, a reputation, excuse me, as a reliable source of information. And that can take a while, but we need to ask ourselves, are we in this because we love truth or are we in this because we want to, you know, get clicks on YouTube or gain an audience or something like that. I've actually had to unfriend, uh, uh, I'm not going to name any names, but I've had to unfriend a couple of people who I thought were in this for the right reasons. And it turns out when you fact check them, 
them on something, uh, the the claws come out and they have a nasty attitude about it, and then it's like, oh, it's because I, I, I'm I'm threatening your your reach or I'm threatening your sizable audience. Uh, even if I'm, you know, when I correct somebody, I do it in love, and I I, I don't try to take any kind of prideful stance on that. But um, <laughs> not known for being yeah, mean, well, not at all. <laughs> well. And let me just say this, guys, and I don't want to go down this path. I, I, I don't, but I'm just going to say this, folks. Our identity is in Christ. Yes. We should not be trying to build a brand. If Amen. we're trying to brand ourselves, we are headed for a train wreck, and it's probably going to involve other people. Let's not do that. Let's let's maintain our identity in Jesus Christ. Let's honor. And Josh, I, I, I appreciate you making that point. I post things all the time that people think, well, you're a pastor. Why are you posting this? Because I want to raise awareness of what's happening, and I want to encourage you by being an example that you can stand for truth. We don't yeah. need to sensationalize this. Just present the truth. That's all. And stop yeah, being a brand. And absolutely. When, when you're dealing with sources, and I, I stress this over and over again, truth loves examination. Yes. Error hates it. That's Amen. right. Yeah, and that's so true. And and we, you know, if we're being honest, we're all human and mistakes are, are going to be made sometimes and that, that's going to happen. So when a mistake is made, when you accidentally post something and somebody corrects you, you know, be gracious and loving about it. This just happened to me um, yesterday. I saw an article about CERN that I got all excited about because, you know, I'm into quantum physics and stuff. And I did not look closely enough at the headline. I, I read the uh, what the source was and I misread it. I thought it was a source that I was familiar with and consider a reliable source and it, it wasn't so i shared it and then somebody you know in love corrected me and said oh actually you know josh this isn't th this is a a repost from uh, an article that came out five years ago this is nothing new and so i i wrote the guy back and i said oh i've been tricked i've been had and i was like you're absolutely right you know thank you for pointing this out you know th this is this is why we all need to be watching each other's backs because there's so much uh untruth out there um and iron sharpens iron and all that so so, you know, I, I, I took it down and it wasn't a problem. Mistakes are going to happen. They're, they're, we're going to accidentally uh, post things sometimes, but it's all about how we treat it once we discover the truth, once somebody uh, corrects us. Are we going to be mean and spiteful and hateful about it? Are we going to say ridiculous things like, well, it's up to you to prove to me that it's not true? That's not a thing. The person making the claim needs that. That's where the burden of proof is. Or are we going to, in humility and humbleness, say, oh, yeah, well, that's my huma humanity coming out. I'm I'm flawed and human, and so I need to correct that. I'll I'll, I'll take it down. Uh, if we if we all are operating out of love, uh, and we all work together and realize, you know, there's many parts of the body. Iron sharpens iron. Not any one of us is is going to be like the main leader of this whole thing, and everybody's following that. If we if we have that mindset, we're we're definitely doing it wrong. Uh, we're all we're all members of the body, and if we can do that and learn how to live in that, man, that's the best place to be. I mean, uh, you know, the community of believers that I'm involved with, you know including you guys and, you know, your, your audience, my audience. And I, I don't even like the word audience. That's technically what it is. But I, I don't feel like I'm up here and there down here. I feel like we're all on the same level. I love this community of believers because – I don't have to be somebody I'm not. You know, I don't have to pretend. And that's what the world requires. The world requires that you sell yourself, you brand yourself. You know, you 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 fake it until you make it and then you never make it. You know, that kind of thing. We don't have to do that here. We 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 love each other for who we are, made in the image of God, and we all follow Christ together. That's how it should be. So all we're asking of people is, hey, come and join the family the way that Christ designed it, and you're gonna have you're gonna be a lot happier. You're definitely gonna have a lot more more love and you're gonna have a lot more support. When when the enemy does throw those fiery darts at you. You know, I think if the Apostle Paul was still writing today, he would say, be quick to listen, do your research, be slow to click, <laughs> slow to share, and only after prayerful consideration, give a comment. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, Mike. <laughs> you know, it... Guys, this 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 is something that the awareness can change the tide. Uh, guys, get the DVD, share it with folks, and get the pack from from Skywatch because they, you know, I've I've got the pack. You know, uh, Josh said, "Hey, Mike, uh, you know, watch my new video," and I said, 
but I, I just got it in this box today, you know, and, and there, 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 there are very, very valuable resources they included with that that really makes it a great value so that you have multiple things. You know, with me, it's, it's like I never have one book show up by itself in the mail. There's always two or three other brothers and sister books that come with it because I love the research. And, uh, you know, the Bible says in a multitude of counselors, there's safety. Well, in a multitude of research, there is also safety. And guys, we can make a difference. This, this is why this war room exists for us to share that th this is a time that God is revealing the darkness so that we can be aware, call it out in our, in our, in our society, uh, to pray about it. Uh, in fact, I was just told and, and, uh, that recently California uh, passed a law on, on the, the, the age of consent yeah. for adolescents, as long as there's no more than a 10 year difference. So by that law, a 20 year old could have sex with a 10 year old in California and it's, it, it would not be called statutory rape. And guys, why are not the people in California with, with pitchforks and torches? That's right. Uh, yeah. we, we, we need to respond say, no, no, no. We're, and you know, sometimes you can, if you can't change the vote, you can sure change your location. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's right. And, uh, yeah. Guys, we, 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 we can no longer identify with this stuff or be a part of it. And, and if they won't change, uh, I, I think we're, we're coming to a time, and I don't think we're quite there yet, but, man, we're on the edge of it, that there are, there are going to be exodus of, of Christians and entrepreneurs that will literally shake the dust off their feet. And we're going to see regions that are going to be marked by God for judgment. And we're, we're on the precipice of this right now. That's why that, that God is bringing all this stuff to light and he's bringing up the awareness. And that's why we need to seek, okay, God, am I, am I to stand and fight or am I just to pack bags and say, okay, it, it's time for me to, uh, to get out of here because I can't have my family to be a part of it. Amen. I completely agree. I'll, I'll uh, interject one quick thing, too. Uh, when people watch the movie, if you if you would, uh, leave a review on Amazon and IMDb for the film. Uh, even if you don't watch it on Amazon, but if you, if you watch the DVD, you can stream it on Amazon. But leave a review because that will help convince Amazon to start putting it in their new release section. Uh, they'll, they'll start suggesting it to viewers, and that's what we want. We want Amazon to be working for us, and we, we, we want to convince Amazon to start uh, sharing this globally. So if it gets enough good reviews, and I don't know what that number is exactly, but if it gets enough good reviews, Amazon will start putting it on lists and, and putting it uh, as suggestions to their, their you know, I mean, they have millions upon millions of, of people, of users. So that, that could help spread this message. Uh, so something as simple as leaving a review can make a huge difference. And, you know, don't just leave five star and say, I like it. Uh, uh, <laughs> Tell us why. <laughs> take time to share your heart. One of the funniest ones I ever got in one of my books is I got five stars because it, it arrived in good condition and the book didn't fall apart as they were reading it. <laughs> A very easy to please person, sounds like. <laughs> very easy to please. You know, he could have said everything in it was trash, but it didn't fall apart. Uh, <laughs> and so when people look at that, they're looking for reasons to watch it. You know, that, that, hey, that, that this, this, that this is something that's going on that we need to be aware of. Guys, any society is judged by how they treat their most vulnerable. That's right. Yeah. And right now, uh, the Western world and the world is, is getting an F in a lot of areas. They're flunking out. And it was our job, and it's still our job, to be the salt and light in the earth. Uh, let's, let's at least get them up to a B minus. <laughs> Uh, what the church is doing and then strive for an A. Guys, I want to thank you for being on today. Uh, before I end, Mike, uh, do you have anything else you'd like to share before we close? No, I would just, well, yes. I don't know why I said no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and that is, and, and that is this. <laughs> Be praying for Josh, Skywatch, Whispering Ponies. Be praying for Dr. Mike, Kingdom Intelligence, Mary Lou. Be praying for these remnant warriors, people that are stepping up, stepping out and saying, we want to win this. Folks, we can win this war, Yes. but we've got to become vocal. We've got to step up. We've got to step out, not be afraid of what other people are going to think or say, 
because the only person that we should be worried about is what will the father say? That's Let's right. Let's take that strategy. That's Amen. right. Josh, any closing thoughts? I just want to thank you and your amazing audience. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for having me on to talk about this. You know, I've actually, in our in our kind of fringe Christian groups, I haven't had any problem getting interviews. Uh, you know, there are people willing to talk about this. But in mainstream conservative networks, you know, I, I have friends that have audiences in the millions. They won't have me on, the mainstream conservatives, because they say that they'll they'll ruin their credibility if they do. That, to me, is a problem uh, for, for a lot of reasons. But I want to thank you for, for being brave enough to actually tackle this issue to have me on and, and have us all talk about this i really appreciate your time and i, I really appreciate you and your audience just uh thank you so much i'm going to add one last thing guys all right you know a lot of us we we give to a lot of different ministries i know that our ministry gives to a lot of different ministries we also give personally and you know sometimes you only have so much in the pot that you can give but what they're doing at whispering ponies and in helping these kids is wonderful. Imagine you say, well, all I can send is $5 a month with what I'm doing. Then set it up to where it's automatically sent to them every single month. What would happen if 10,000 people would share $5? That's $50,000 a month. That can make the difference in the life of these kids. And guys, we can do it. Uh, we can pray for them. And guys, it's time for us to stand up as a body and draw a line in the sand and saying, we're not going to tolerate this anymore in Jesus name. Amen. Guys, thank you for being on with us today. And, uh, uh, we look forward for the next podcast and, and Josh, I'm looking forward to your next book and your next documentary. Thank and you. I, I, I see, uh, God really honing a new talent in you that for me, it, it just thrills me, uh, to, to see that begin to develop because, uh, uh, I have been praying that the next generation would uh, take the baton and take it up to a new level that, some of us older timers, Mike, like we, you know, it's, it's time for us to see that younger generation to stand on our shoulders and to take Amen. this. Amen. And when I, when I see Josh, when I see, uh, Jamie Walden and others, I, I am just almost, uh, giddy <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I'm, I'm so excited to see what God's doing. Thank well, you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. God bless guys. God bless.